available. The moon is a little like love. Will you marry me? I will marry you. I will be your wife. Do you love him, Loretta? No. Good. When you love him, they drive you crazy. Sometimes. Why are you marrying Johnny? He's a fool. It makes you act a little crazy. Where are you taking me? To the bed. Isn't it romantic? You get a love bite on your neck. Your life's going down the toilet. You'll have your eyes open for you, my friend. I have my eyes open. I'll say no more. You haven't said anything. Ah, que bella luna. You ruined my life. That's impossible. You ruined my life. Look, it's Cosmo's moon. Why do men chase women? Nerves. I don't want to talk about it. That moon. That crazy moon. Now. You don't. I love you. What? Snap out of it. I'm confused. They say there's nothing new under the sun. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> but under the moon, that's another story. Do you love him, Loretta? Ma, I love him awful. Oh, God, that's too bad. Cher, Nicolas Cage, in a Norman Jewison film. A la familia, eh? Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM. Last night, we dedicated our lineup to Ryan O'Neill, a memorial tribute to the talented actor who died on December 8th last year. Tonight, a second straight memorial tribute, this one honoring one of the foremost filmmakers of his generation, Norman Jewison. Jewison, who was 97 when he died on January 20th, spent five decades building a diverse and powerful body of work, including multiple Oscar winners that were also box office hits. We begin tonight with two Jewison films that fit that description, both from the late 1960s. In a few hours, we'll have the Oscar winner for Best Picture of 1967, In the Heat of the Night. But first... Jewison's follow-up to that film, a sexy, stylish crime caper starring Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway. From United Artists in 1968, The Thomas Crown Affair. McQueen is Thomas Crown, a clever, refined, fabulously wealthy captain of industry. He's so clever, in fact, that he's grown bored with outsmarting his business rivals, and his rebellious nature leads him to try to pull off the perfect crime. When he successfully executes a multi-million dollar bank robbery, the insurance company summons its top investigator, that's Faye Dunaway, to try to crack the case. What follows is an alluring cat and mouse pursuit fueled by mutual professional respect and intense sexual attraction. The story came from a Boston lawyer named Alan Trustman. This was his first script. His second was another 1968 film starring Steve McQueen, the police thriller Bullet. Norman Jewison worked with Trustman on polishing the script, which Jewison saw as a golden opportunity to play around with a traditional visual narrative. Working with cinematographer Haskell Wexler, editor Hal Ashby, and title designer Pablo Ferro, Jewison used a series of split screens, multiple images shown simultaneously throughout the film 
a technique inspired by an Oscar-winning short film by artist Christopher Chapman that Jewison saw at the 1967 World's Fair in Montreal. Here's the movie from 1968, also with Paul Burke and Jack Weston, The Thomas Crown Affair. The Thomas Crown Affair marked the second film Steve McQueen made with director Norman Jewison. They established a strong working relationship on their first picture, The Cincinnati Kid from 1965, a film Jewison made after he came in to replace the original director, Sam Peckinpah, who'd been fired. Despite their earlier success collaborating, McQueen had to talk Jewison into casting him as Thomas Crown. At the time, actually throughout his entire career, Steve McQueen was best known for his rebellious roles, but the characters were usually rugged, crude, or blue-collar types. Jewison just didn't see McQueen as someone like Thomas Crown, a polished sophisticate with a tailored wardrobe. In his interview with Robert Osborne for TCM's private screenings franchise, Jewison said the more he dismissed McQueen for the part, the more McQueen became determined to play it until finally Jewison gave in. Jewison also said that because of McQueen's troubled childhood, he was looking for a father. Jewison told him, look, Steve, I can't be your father, but I'll be your brother, and I'll always look out for you. Jewison said McQueen trusted him from that moment on, and he was able to give this actor, who could be difficult for filmmakers, helpful direction, even taking lines away from McQueen in the script without an argument. Coming up, we continue our memorial tribute to Norman Jewison with one of his best movies, the Best Picture Oscar winner for 1967, In the Heat of the Night, is next on TCM. Next on TCM, In the Heat of the Night, then Moonstruck, and later, Fiddler on the Roof. TCM remembers Norman Jewison tonight. Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us on TCM as we continue to celebrate the remarkable career of Canadian filmmaker Norman Jewison, who died in January at the age of 97. Jewison, like so many great directors, excelled at making movies across several genres. He made romantic comedies from Send Me No Flowers in 1964 to Moonstruck in 1987, musicals like Fiddler on the Roof and Jesus Christ Superstar, both of those in the 70s, Jewison even went sci-fi with Rollerball in 1975. Most notably, he regularly made films that tackled important social and political issues, taking on those themes in comedies like The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming from 1964, and in the landmark drama we have next. From the Mirish Corporation and United Artists in 1967, the winner of the Oscar for Best Picture in the Heat of the Night. Sidney Poitier and Rod Steiger star in this film that's a procedural crime drama in name only. Here's what I mean. I've seen In the Heat of the Night maybe eight times and I still forget who killed the guy because who did it is so much less compelling than the story of the men who solved it in the era they solved it. The tense dynamic between those two men is what makes In the Heat of the Night one of the most important pictures of the 20th century. The story follows the investigation of a murder in a racist southern town. Rod Steiger in an Oscar-winning performance is the old-school local white police chief. Sidney Poitier is the sophisticated, smart, cutting-edge black homicide detective from Philadelphia who just happens to be passing through town. 1967 was a year of seismic change, not merely across the country, but in Hollywood. Directors with bold things to say about the world gained more freedom to make films as they saw fit, confronting important subjects with greater realism, challenging the established orthodoxy, often welcoming the controversy that came with that. Norman Jewison was more than ready for the moment. Born and raised in Canada, in Toronto, he'd experienced racism firsthand in his childhood, being bullied by kids who thought he was Jewish because of his last name. And later, while hitchhiking in the Jim Crow South in the 1940s, he witnessed how black Americans were routinely mistreated and marginalized. Norman Jewison was eager to bring In the Heat of the Night to the big screen. Based on a best-selling novel by John Ball and adapted by Sterling Siliphant, the film boldly challenged racial conventions, culminating in one scene where a powerful white businessman 
slaps Sidney Poitier's character, Virgil Tibbs, for asking what he considers to be an impertinent question. And then, in a flash, Tibbs slaps him right back, a symbol of black independence and self-respect unlike anything seen in a mainstream Hollywood movie to that point. Here's the film from 1967, also with Lee Grant delivering a wonderful performance as well as Warren Oates, Bea Richards, and Scott Wilson, plus a terrific score by Quincy Jones, In the Heat of the Night. In the Heat of the Night, released in 1967, beat out some heavy hitters to win the Oscar for Best Picture, including two groundbreaking movies, The Graduate and Bonnie and Clyde, as well as a more traditional drama that also starred Sidney Poitier and addressed serious racial issues, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? That In the Heat of the Night won Best Picture is a testament to how forcefully it challenged racial conventions and how much the country was clamoring for that kind of change. Norman Jewison, the director, thrived in that climate. The movies that address civil rights and social justice, he said, are the ones that are dearest to me. He made quite a few, including Fist, starring Sylvester Stallone, as well as And Justice for All with Al Pacino. There are also two films that, along with In the Heat of the Night, Jewison considered part of his unofficial racial justice trilogy, A Soldier's Story from 1984 and The Hurricane from 1999, both of those starring Denzel Washington. Coming up, one of Norman Jewison's best films. It is, quite possibly, the perfect romantic comedy. Cher and Nicolas Cage star in Moonstruck, next on TCM. Hello, Ben Mankiewicz with you. Thanks for joining us tonight for an important lineup of films. These are all movies directed by our friend Norman Jewison, a significant filmmaker of the new Hollywood era. Norman died in January at the age of 97. Up next, our mini marathon of Jewison's best movies continues with The Bride and the Wolf. If you've never heard of it, that makes sense. The Bride and the Wolf was the film's working title, a good title, too. Not as good, though, as the one producers eventually used. From 1987, this is Moonstruck. Cher, at an Oscar-winning performance, leads the cast as Loretta Castorini, an Italian-American widow living with her parents and her grandfather in Brooklyn. Loretta has been playing it safe in life. She's set to marry a nice man, a man she likes but certainly does not love, played with memorable unctuousness by Danny Aiello. Loretta's outlook begins to change when she meets Zaello's brother, which is how Nicolas Cage enters the picture, electrifying the screen in the process. Norman Jewison said Moonstruck was the one film he made where he got all the actors he wanted, and we should all be grateful that he did, because this cast, individually and as an ensemble, is perfect. In addition to Cher, Nick Cage, and Danny Aiello, there's Olympia Dukakis, who won a Best Supporting Actress Oscar as Loretta's mother, Vincent Gardenia, who earned a Best Supporting Actor nomination as Loretta's dad, plus John Mahoney, Louis Gus, Julie Bavasso, and Theodore Chaliapin Jr., who plays Loretta's amusingly bewildered dog-walking grandfather. Norman Jewison called Moonstruck his personal favorite. That speaks volumes. His credits range from the Cincinnati Kid and In the Heat of the Night to the Thomas Crown Affair and Fiddler on the Roof. By the way, it's always fun to remember that this director of Fiddler on the Roof, last name Jewison, was not Jewish. Jewison had to tell the United Artists execs who hired him that he wasn't because they clearly thought he was. Born and raised in Toronto, Norman Jewison grew up enthralled with movies and theater, but by the time he was ready to embark on a career in the 1950s, television was the new hot ticket, and that's where he got his start. He came up through the ranks as a TV writer, actor, and director in London, Toronto, and eventually New York, famously directing variety shows and specials for greats like Harry Belafonte and Judy Garland. He got his break into feature films when Tony Curtis asked him to direct the 1962 comedy 40 Pounds of Trouble. That led to a contract with Universal where they assigned him two classic Doris Day comedies, The Thrill of It All and Send Me No Flowers. From there, Jewison was off and running with a movie career that lasted until his final film, The Statement, in 2003. Here is one of his best from MGM UA in 1987 with an Oscar-winning original screenplay by John Patrick Shanley, Moonstruck. 
Moonstruck director Dorman Jewison had a long appreciation for Cher that began back in the days when she performed with her former husband, Sonny Bono. So when Cher initially turned down the role of Loretta Castorini in Moonstruck, Jewison refused to accept no for an answer. Even under all that schmaltz, Cher had a tremendous sense of humor and sharp comic timing, Jewison said. He coaxed her into joining the production, convincing her that films like Moonstruck don't come along often and that Cher would regret turning down the role if she did for the rest of her life. With Moonstruck, Jewison directed both Cher and Olympia Dukakis to their only Oscar wins. Jewison himself received seven Oscar nominations throughout his career, four for Best Picture, three more for Best Director. Those came in three separate decades, In the Heat of the Night from 1967, Fiddler on the Roof from 71, and Moonstruck from 87. Coming up, a movie that earned Norman Jewison two of those nominations from 1971, Fiddler on the Roof is next on TCM.